Hi, uh, Kubrick Lover 1972 here, also known as Brian, with my 31 Days of Halloween. Um, I'm reshooting this because I thought I didn't really do a good presentation of, of, this, of this film that I'm going to talk about tonight. Um, I'm not quite sure. You know, I watch my videos after I shoot them to see if I sound okay, because I feel like I sound... I think a few, few of the videos I've shot for this marath this marathon or whatever um, sound a little bit awkward with my speech. Most of them, I to me, to my ear, sound fairly good. I think there's a few er a few a few videos where I'm going like saying things like um 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 um, and I think that's sort of um, oh, there you go. Awkward, if you if you know what I mean. I, I don't know if it's awkward. Maybe that's not 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 the quite not quite the right word to use. It's, it's um there we go again. It's the uh it's not it's not succinct. It's not um very well uh, spoken. It, it it's it's sort of makes the speech a little uneven, if you will. I, I'm not sure. I, I maybe if I don't if I don't say um too much, maybe it's is not a big deal, you know. But I'm gonna try and shoot uh shoot this video again because I don't think I really did a very good job the first time. I, I didn't shoot the whole way through. I shot a little bit. Um and I, and then I thought, you know what? I better go back and shoot it again. So here it is again. Um uh, forget all. Just forget. I'm. I'm saying. Um. I just say. Um. You know. I had thought of. You know. Editing my videos. But in in this particular context, uh, editing doesn't probably make sense uh, for, because I'm just talking about a movie, and then that's that. You know. So t tonight's movie is The Fog, the remake of the John Carpenter film. As to whether it's better than the original Fog by John Carpenter, I would say no. Uh, the original Fog was a little more, well, probably lower budget, lower budgeted. Um, much, in a way, I would say much more innovative in that aspect. And I said in a previous video, not not one of these thirty-one days of Hollywood videos, but maybe it was. Um, I think it might have been a DVD and Blu-ray pickup video where I mentioned maybe it was that or maybe it was some other type of video. I was talking about how a filmmaker with less money can be much more creative than a filmmaker who has tons of money. And in the case of this remake, um, there's there's a fog coming in and they have the... CGI characters. Uh, maybe that's getting tiresome after a while, CGI characters. When CGI characters came on the scene, I didn't really mind it. And I, I guess I still don't mind it. Uh, I, I like to... Not that I love Lord of the Rings. I think they're entertaining. I don't think they're the greatest thing on the earth. You know, some people think... You know, these are some of the greatest films I've ever seen in my life, and I'm not one of those people. But what they did with Gal and what Peter Jackson did with another film of King Kong, I thought, you know, that, um, what do you call it, CGI was very, very good. But in particular cases, I guess you could be lazy with it. And why remake a classic, you know? Uh, I, I guess they remade Halloween. Uh, they, I think they remade... I don't know. Let me know underneath if they've remade some other other, other John Carpenter movies. I, I think they have. Did they did they did they do a remake of Escape from New York and Escape from L.A. or maybe they're thinking of making a remake? I don't know. But anyways, the story concerns uh, a so there's going to be a celebration on the founding of this island town and. At the start of the film, well, not the very start, but close to the start, 
a um, two, two two young men and two young women go out into the uh, into a on a boat and they go out into the sea, and the two young girls get killed and one of the young guys gets killed and the other uh, other young guy manages to hide himself. Of course, I don't know how how he could really hide himself if they're supernatural beings or whatever. When they find him, you know, I just saw that, you know. So they've been missing, and, and one of the main characters on the on the on the island, he says, "I'm going to go out and see, you know, um, what's happened to them," and he takes his girlfriend along, and they find the boat and they find the dead bodies. They take the boat back, and they're, you know, they're what's that term? Uh, they're under suspicion. They're, they're, um, what do you call that? Prime suspects. Um, but but they're they have a possibility because you know the the fact that they brought back dead bodies that they were the murderers. You know, so and and. This guy who goes out with his girlfriend to the sea to find the the boat with the bodies. When he meets her uh, the night before, I believe it's the night before. He doesn't know why she left town, and then she she says, "Take me to my place," which is her mother's. When she arrives in her mother's house, her mother doesn't want her there. She comes back to the car, and her boyfriend already knows why she left town because her her mother threw her out of town so they go back to his place and there's a sex scene in the film that's pretty soft core it's it's pretty pretty uh tame it's just just them having a shower you don't really see anything um and and then um then i think that's is it that night yeah there's that night there's another fog that comes in from the sea and you hear this sound um and you don't know what that means because people hear it on the walls they hear they hear the sound and they don't know what it is but you'll find out later in the film as you watch it what that is in reference to and i think you you hear that in reference to the uh, old um not the old the, the original fog as well I think you find out what the reference to is in that film as well, but you know that that's like a recalling of what what was done in the previous movie. Um, so the um, there, there's a uh, like like the like the original movie. There's a DJ who, who has a radio station and a lighthouse, and she's in this particular case, the DJ is played by Selma Blair. She has a son, which I I think they found the, the the original movie pretty faithfully. I think there's a little bit of a difference between the two, towards maybe the end. I would say I don't think it ends the same way. I can't remember totally the uh, original movie, but I'll um, when I get there. When I get to that point, well, let me get to that point first. So so she's a DJ. This woman's a DJ. She's played by Selma Blair. She has a son, and she has, the next day she wakes up, and I had a little bit of a problem with this scene when she wakes up. Her son comes into the bedroom, and she has a shirt on, and she has underwear on, but she doesn't have, you know, pants on or shorts or something. It just seemed a little uh, creepy, maybe. I, I just don't know why a mother would be in underwear in front of her young son. You know, it 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 doesn't seem. It seems a little shaky to me. I don't know, but I guess I guess it passed. So um, the uh, Selma Blair character goes to work at the lighthouse. She's been given this this computer with a camera on it. The camera has to be. This is the, this is the day. These are still the days with the internet where you had cathode ray monitors, you know, tube tube monitors, and a laptop would be very thick. And and with a laptop, 
you'd have to, I think most of the time have a thick, not a thick, um, you'd have to add, you'd have to clip the cam, the, the um, camera on to, to the uh, computer rather than today's laptops that have a lens already built in, you know, if I'm correct on that, maybe I'm wrong on that. So she sees, I don't know if it's her boyfriend or her former husband or whatever, um, maybe it's her boyfriend or a friend of hers, who's, I guess he's in the lighthouse as well, and she hears stuff from, from, his air, from his end, and then the fog starts rolling in. Uh, she, I think she hears him getting hurt, and... and she immediately says, she immediately thinks of her son, and then she gets in her car and she races to get to her son's, um, to get to her, to get to her house where her son is. And she, she told her son earlier in the day, after he picked up stuff off the, off the, off of the, uh, shore, not to go to the shore without her permission. And she, the boy asked, I, it's either his aunt or babysitter. Can I go to the show? Can I go to the beach? She says yes. Just be back before dark. And when he's there on the beach, close to nighttime, uh, well, maybe it's evening. This old man—I think it's an old man. He's pulling up a rope, and all of a sudden, this galleon, this old ship, or I guess it's what you call a galleon, is coming towards the shore. So he runs up the hill to his house. And uh, something happens to the babysitter or aunt or whatever. And um, he's he's in his room and the fog is creeping um, through, through the house. And the boyfriend and girlfriend are on their way there be, um, to rescue him because they don't know if the, uh, the mother will make it there in time. And they manage to make... I don't want to spoil this too much, but let me let me just say some stuff and then I'll leave it at that. So they managed to get there. They managed to save him. His 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 uh, mother is on the way to pick him up, but she gets she gets in an accident and something happens to her. I'm not going to say what happens to her. And then um, something happens with the son and the boyfriend, the girlfriend, and the mother. Um, and, and at the end, all these people are, are, are sequestered at the, at the museum in front of the, pla uh, in front of the statue of the town, town founders. And they find out why these spirits have been visiting this town and what the true story is about what the town was really founded about. And there's a surprise at the end that I don't think was in the original movie. And I kind of liked at the end, because I, I, I thought this movie... I mean, I'm kind of soured on these kind of movies, the, the modern horror movies, because... Um, because I, with the older horror movies, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre... Um, with uh, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, uh, Rosemary's Baby, The Exorcist. We have no hope for these characters. Oh, oh, Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, we have no, we, we, like, and, and sometimes maybe there is a hope, but at the end, you know, what you think is the light at the end of the tunnel turns out to be a hole in the ground, you know, leading you down. And it turns out, it's not what it, we thought it was going to be. And, you know, I like that kind of horror because that's what a horror movie should do. It should say, you know, it should give you no reprieve. It should say, you know, you're you're screwed and there's nothing you can do about it, you know. Um, I mean, there are some films that sort of have happy endings to them, but they're very good horror movies, such as The Shining and The Exorcist. Um, but... A lot of horror movies, I think, if they're going to be good, we've got to have a lot of, well, not a lot, but we've got to have a few key characters die, and we can't really give too much hope of, a, too much optimism 
for the characters because if we did, it really isn't a horror movie in my opinion. Um, in terms of how this compares to the original The Fog, the, um, the, the special effects, uh, they're good, but I, I sort of like the going going back to the old waves special effects, like with if you think of a film, not a horror film that I'm thinking about right now, but if you think if you think of a film called uh, not called you know Close Encounters of the Third Kind, they would rely on practical effects. They would shoot a s scene they say is in the Gobi Desert, but it's somewhere in California or Arizona, and they would take a model miniature model uh, boat and they place it close to the lens and they'd use the lens they put the lens on a certain millimeter and it like a wide angle or whatever and you would think that's a giant boat that's been thrown into the desert you know so with these CGI stuff you know and I, I find some CGI interesting like how they use it in Lord of the Rings with the Gal with Gollum and how Peter Jackson used it with King Kong. And uh, sometimes it can be very good, uh, but sometimes it can be kind of lazy. Um, and I, I just think that even though this is an interesting ending, I think I prefer the original um, because it's just much more practical and why remake, why remake a classic, you know? So I, I don't know if the original Fog was that much of a classic compared to, compared to a film like Halloween or, you know, The Shining or um, Rosemary's Baby or Nightmare on Elm Street or Dawn of the Dead, you know, or Alien. I don't think it matches up to those films. But I think the original Fog was, it, or yeah, it is a much better movie than this, even though this is okay, but, you know, not, st not spectacular. So... I'm going to give this film probably, I'm going to recommend it, but but just, um, I think I'll put a, I, I, somewhere in between three and three and a half stars. Uh, I'm going to give it three stars because it was a little, it, it was just a little, you know, let's put the, they're, they're looking at history, the boyfriend and the girlfriend, they're looking at photos and looking in this old book and we've seen that a thousand times in all these movies about you know ancient lore and like what's this mystery and why are these people spirits here and all that stuff and it seemed very um cliched and uh trite and uh so for that reason i'll give it a three stars which is a marginal thumbs out of five thumbs up out of five stars. So that does it for tonight. Um, I looked on on Netflix to see if they had The Mist. I looked on Shutter to see if they had The Mist so I could do a comparison video, but they didn't have... Well, they, Netflix has The Mist, but it's a television show, and I'm not going to use that. that. That would take too long, and I don't think that's um, fair. It's not really a movie. And then I had... Then I... I uh, last night I was looking through my horror collection. Well, my DVD Blu-ray collection, not my horror collection, really. And I came across The Grudge, the American version. And uh, so, you know, I've, so I've, I've, I've said that I, can, I um, subscribed to a few uh, streaming services. And I looked on Shudder and I looked on Netflix and I can't find the Japanese uh, original of the of the grudge on there, so I, I may may I may put the grudge into uh, this month's watching. So uh, yeah, um, and I, I found some other movies. I found so many movies. Well, not tons and tons of movies, but I found more movies than I than I need to review for the whole month. So I've, I have an ample supply of films to review of my own disc, but I'll probably do a few, a few, maybe one or two reviews, probably at least one from a streaming service. One of them being Manhunter, uh, which I think is directed by Michael Mann, which I think is, well, was the original Hannibal Lecter story before Science of Lambs and, and, and Manhunter came out in the late eighties, I believe 87, maybe. Um, and I think there's another horror movie 
maybe it's on Mubi as well. And I might watch that too and count that as part of my marathon. So uh, enough, enough of that. Um, I, I think I've gone on long enough. And uh, I'll, I'll put my blog up here and my garage band notices. Um, I, I, will, I won't keep you any longer. And um, oh, and, and tomorrow I, I, I watch one of the movies I've talked about that I want to watch before Wednesday. But the other movie that I haven't watched, as I said, was close to a three-hour movie. And I think I'm going to watch it tomorrow because it's it expires on Wednesday. I, I'm, I, I might be going somewhere on, on Wednesday. So it's possible on Wednesday or Thursday, maybe on Wednesday, like one film might be reviewed and then maybe two on Thursday. I, I don't know. I'm trying to get all these juggled. You know, I'm trying to watch regular movies and watch horror movies. But I, I really want to watch this th close to three-hour movie because this is a Japanese film. I looked at the trailer on movie and it looks fantastic. It's a film called Arrows Plus Massacre, and I think it came out in 69. The thing about um, me reviewing films on movie is usually when I put the video on about it, They've expired already, so I sort of feel sorry about that. I have thought, you know, why don't I watch a whole bunch of movies on Mubi before they expire? So if anyone goes on to Mubi, they can see them, you know. But anyways, enough of that. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll be back here, if not tomorrow, maybe Wednesday. Probably, though, at least by Thursday, if not Wednesday. Okay, bye-bye.